All right, um, and the last topic for the, this lecture is triple integral. So the, this is optional, so you don't really have to do it. It's not going to be on the exam, but if you need it for your um, engineering classes, then I guess you'll just have to, to, to watch and try to understand it. All right, uh, so triple integrals are very, very similar. So um, basically, if we have a three-dimensional region, D, or a volume, then we can uh, take the triple integral of a function of three variables over the, the this volume, right? Uh, it, it has a number of uh, similar applications to double integrals, like mass of a three-dimensional solid with um, a density that depends on the point. So there are moments about uh, coordinate planes, um, center of mass, and so on and so forth. I mean, so th there is a number of um, applications that are very, very, very similar to applications of double integrals. Then um, uh, we can introduce a rectangular coordinate system. And in this rectangular coordinate system, in order to define our ribbon sums, uh, we just split our region into little boxes. 3D boxes, and then we take a ribbon sum over the whole um, region. Anyway, I I'm going to skip the details. If you're interested, you can just, I don't know, if you're interested in details, you can just uh, you know, do your research to do your studies. But at the moment, it's not very important, right? So if we have a, a rectangular block or a rectangular box, then uh, to um, compute the triple integral, well, triple integral, so the integral should be triple integral, sorry, um, not, not the double integral, of course. So triple integral um, over uh, that rectangular block, then basically it is the same as an iterated integral. So uh, to, to compute triple integrals over rectangular blocks is relatively straightforward. I mean, it's not really different than uh, double integrals, right? So things become really hard when um, you want to compute triple integrals over non-rectangular regions. And it is doable, but it's kind of tricky, right? So let me show you uh, how we can do it, right? So to find the volume or say, um, if you want to integrate over a certain tetrahedron, right? So like the, the one on the picture. Now to find the volume of the, this tetrahedron, we've got to integrate to find a triple integral over the given region of the constant one uh, dv, right? So in order to do that, since the, the, the volume, well, the tetrahedron is not rectangular, right? So in order to compute the triple integral over it, we've got to uh, basically uh, think of some, some order of integration. Let's say if we're going to integrate in the order uh, like the, the say, dz, dy, dx. It means that um, we need to describe our region um, as the, the region where x changes between two constants, then y should change between two functions of x, like, I don't know, let's say a, b, y should be changing between two functions of x, say g1 of x and g2 of x, and that z should be changing between two functions of x and y. So say h1 of x, y, and h2 of x, y. And then we will go to take the triple integral uh, from a to b by x, from g1 to g2 by, by y, and from h1 to g2 by, by z. And th this is how, how it works out, right? So uh, let me uh, maybe translate it into specific numbers um, here, right? So um, what is in, in, the, in the given um, tetrahedron? I mean, um, so what is the smallest possible value of x and uh, largest possible value of x? Uh, well, if you have a good illustration like here, it is kind of more or less, you know, easy to, to understand. Well, you, you just look at the picture and you see that, okay, the um, X changes from, uh, you know, from the center towards kind of the, um, towards you, so, so to say, right? And the smallest possible value of X is, is here, is along the back side of the tetrahedron, back, well, yeah. And the largest value of X is, is here, right? 
So here x is 0 and here x is 1. So x changes from, from 0 to 1. This is how you figure out uh, the limits for, for x. Uh, now, y. Well, actually, the, the one in the middle is, is the hardest to, to figure out, usually, right? So, um, because y should be changed between two functions of x. And in order to, to see it, what you do is, basically, you imagine uh, the projection of your... Um, a region of integration onto the xy plane. So onto the xy plane, it means that uh, imagine yourself um, being somewhere, uh, you know, on the z-axis, and you are looking down on on your tetrahedron from um, upward below, right? So from the direction of the uh, z-axis. So if you look from that side what are you going to see and uh, you know if you think about it, it it may be hard to imagine but if you think a little bit about it you will realize that what you see is actually this triangle right so it means that in order to figure out the limits for y you need to look at the, this triangle and you need to to uh, to look at what is the smallest value of y and what is the largest value of y Uh, and uh, so the direction of the y-axis is, is here, right? So basically, um, you know, um, so maybe let me do it like this. Uh, so I guess the smallest value of y is around here, and the largest value of y is around here. Right? So the, this is the limits for y. So along this axis, we have uh, x equals y. So remember that we are concerned at what happens on the projection in the projection onto the um, x y axis, right? So, and here the, the, this is the line x equals y. So which means that the smallest value of of, uh, of y is, is actually x, and the largest value of y is going to be one. So let me check if this is correct. Yeah, from x to y, yeah, correct. <laughs> okay, I, I got it right. So and z is between two functions of um, uh, of x and y. Now, to figure out the limits for z, what we need to do uh, limits for z are somehow easier to to figure out. I I, I think so. So basically, uh, in order to see limits for z, what you do is uh, you just kind of, so this is the direction of the z-axis. So the smallest uh, value of z is on the xy plane. It is somewhere here. And the largest value of z is, is basically on this plane, and it is somewhere here, right? So that, that's the, the idea, okay. Right, so the smallest value of z, as you see again, so it is here, so it is from zero, and the largest value of z is on this plane, uh, and the plane is x minus y plus z is zero, so along this plane, z equals, uh, you just need to move x and y to the right hand side, it's going to be y minus x, so y minus x, right, so the limits uh, of integration for z are from 0 to y, y minus x. So let me check if this is correct. And yeah, this, this is indeed correct. So I got the limits of integration right. So let me just now do the, the integral, right? So the first integral is this. So the integral from 0 to um, uh, y minus x of 1 dz is, is really just uh, y minus x. So the next thing that we need to do, we need to integrate this from x to 1 with respect to y, dy. Um, and when we are integrating with respect to y, we get, so the antiderivative of y is y squared over 2. Uh, and it changes from x to 1 minus x times 
the upper limit minus the lower limit, so which is one minus x. And this is, I guess, is one minus x square over two minus x plus x square and this is one half um, minus minus x plus x square over two right i think so i hope i didn't make any mistakes Right, so this was again. Uh, so it is this integral. So the remaining thing is just to integrate this from zero to one. So one half minus x plus x square over two dx, and this is what the integral of one half is one half minus x minus one half plus one six, which is one six. Okay, correct. One sixth. And by the way, uh, so here you can see the illustration. So uh, I didn't use the, the, this illustration because I kind of wanted to to explain how you can obtain the limits of integration without uh, you know <laughs> really looking at the correct answer because the, this picture reveals the correct answer to you. <laughs> so I used the one on the previous slide to to explain. What, what what I mean. All right. Uh, now, maybe let me just go through it one more time. I'm going to evaluate the same vo volume in, in a different order, right? So dx dy dz instead. So notice that uh, this picture, it shows the order dz dy dx, right? So uh, when you're looking at the picture, you kind of need to pretend that, uh, you know, the limits of integration are not indicated on, on the picture. Well, so, uh, so the, the picture is not for this example. Now, in order to do the order um, dx, dy, dz, I'm going to begin with z, right? So first I need to, to figure out uh, the limits for, for z, the smallest possible value of z and the largest possible value of z. And again, if, if you have a picture, then it's pretty easy to, uh, to see. You know, for z, the smallest possible value of z is on the um, x y plane so here z is zero and the largest possible value of z is at this point and here z is one so z is from zero to one so now you need to we need to figure out the limits of integration for y and the limits of integration for y should be some functions of z so it means the following. So it means that in order to see this, you need to take the projection of your tetrahedron onto the yz plane, right? So you need to pretend that you are staying somewhere here in the direction of the x-axis, that this is you, and you are looking at your tetrahedron from the direction of the x-axis. So what are you going to see? And basically what you're going to see is... Um, is essentially this triangle, right? This is what you're going to see. If you're looking from the direction of the um, uh, x-axis. And then you need to figure out how uh, the small the limits for y. What is the smallest possible value of y and what is the largest possible value of y? And you realize that uh, this is the line, you know, along the y-axis, and the, the, this is the smallest possible value of y, and this is the largest possible value of y. Right? And here, along the, this line, um, y equals z, and along this line, y equals o, o 1. Yeah. So, which essentially means that uh, y is changing, I guess, from z to, to 1. The next step is to figure out the limits of integration for, for x. And for x, they are somehow easier to, to figure out. I think that the one in, in the middle is the hardest to, 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 to see. But OK, uh, so for x, again, so you just need to look at the picture and figure out what where are points with the smallest possible values of x 
and where are points with the largest possible value x, right? And um, you just need to look at the picture. So see that this is the direction of the x-axis, right? So the smallest value of x is along this uh, triangle. So here, x is 0. And the largest values of x are along this uh, slanted face and along the, the slanted um, triangle, um, x minus y plus z were, was 0, as far as I remember, right? Yeah. So, which means that x here, you need to, well, the limits of integration for x should be functions of y and z. So, you need to solve for, for x from here. So, x is y minus z. There we go. Yeah. And notice that this is non-negative because, you know, from the uh, second inequality, you know that y is bigger than z. So, y minus z should be a positive number. So, it makes sense. So, x should should be non-negative. All right, so what we obtained is that the limits of integration for, for x are from y minus, sorry, y minus z uh, to, to, oh. sorry, from 0 to y, y minus z. Uh, from 0 to y minus z. So the answer here is that, I mean, it's not the final answer, but it's the integral um, from 0 to 1. This is by z. The next one is going to be from z to, uh, to 1. This is, this is going to be with respect to y. The third one is going to be from 0 to y minus z. And this is going to be with respect to x. So then 1, and then dx, dy, dz in the reverse order. I mean, in, in the same order as here. And in reverse order as, as compared to, to uh, the limits of integration. So that that's basically it. I mean, if you look at this, then the integral is actually the, the same as in the previous uh, slide. Only you know we switched some variables around, but it looks very very similar. So the answer is still going to be one sixth. So basically, th th this is how you do triple integrals. So it is fairly complicated. I mean, the idea is same as for double integrals. Only it's much harder to visualize but yeah so this is the end of the lecture and here is the quiz uh, for the last part of